As grateful as I am to know that you're watching this TV show, I have to tell you, in all honesty, you'd probably be better off outside, exploring one of America's national parks. I have been blessed and really lucky over the years to have seen my fair share. Yosemite, Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, Grand Tetons, Bryce, Zion, Joshua Tree, Smoky Mountains, Acadia. I've probably been to two or three dozen, but I know I'm just scratching the surface. And I know I'm not alone. This year, like the year before and the year before that, Americans will spend over one billion combined hours camping, hiking, exploring, and just sightseeing through our national park system. If you're not among them, you should be, because no TV show, even one as spectacular as this one, can hope to capture the majesty or the grandeur of our national parks. All I can tell you is that their existence is a big part of what makes our country great. And their accessibility, the fact that you and I are welcome there, well, that's a critical part of how America works. Since the first of them was founded a century and a half ago, that's Yellowstone, by the way, America's national parks have grown more critical to modern society than we ever imagined. And I don't just mean for outdoor enthusiasts. No, everyone, and I mean everyone, whether they've stepped foot into a park or not, owes more to these places than they might think. And it's because their benefits stretch far beyond their boundaries, with such national perks as economic growth, fresh water, clean air. They even keep our weather in check all from some 400 plus federally protected parks that together make up an area larger than Colorado. But keeping all that country safely intact and open to the public is no small endeavor. It takes dedicated workers toiling in some of the toughest environments America has to offer. And few come tougher than Joshua Tree National Park. Here in the summer months, Temperatures can easily exceed triple digits on a cool day, which might also explain why park attendance takes a bit of a dip right about now. But for the park's 140 employees, it's about the only time they have to prepare for the busy season ahead. Even in the midst of a crippling staff shortage, infrastructures need man hours, wildlife needs management. And as always, so do the park patrons bold enough to be here. So, for the latter of those jobs, Joshua Tree counts on a mere four rangers to patrol the grounds on a regular basis. Rangers like Frank Klein. This job is particularly interesting because it's a very multifaceted job. I am a, the search and rescue coordinator and the emergency medical services coordinator. I also do normal law enforcement patrol as well. So. I guess that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Indeed it is. But all those skills are essential for not only making do with the staff they've got, but also responding to, on average, about 20 emergencies every week, wherever and however they might occur. You can find yourself in trouble with heat illness way faster than most people expect. There's also all kinds of other environmental hazards in the park, things like rattlesnakes, you can get lost. So honestly, when we, when we have uh, unprepared visitors, it's, it's kind of hard to know what kind of trouble they're going to get into. And speak of the devil. Go ahead. Sounds like Frank might just have his first wayward patron of the day. I'll be in route. We got a stranded climber. A lot of times when we get a report like this, we don't get a lot of details. We generally want to talk to the reporting party face to face so we can figure out everything we need to know as quick as we can. And on arriving at the scene, it appears the reporting party is already waiting to shed some light on the situation. As I understand it, I, it sounds like you've got a friend who's like stuck on a ledge. Yeah, you can see him, he's way up there. We were scrambling like under there and he just kept going up, but he can't get down from where he is right now. We're gonna go get your friend down there, right? Okay, thank you. All right. For Frank, that means he'll have to go up and gather the climber himself, but not before a quick 
pre-rescue consultation. I'm gonna come down to you with a rope and we're gonna get you down to the ground. I need you to just sit, put your back up against the steep part of the wall and then just sit there. All right, he's listening to commands, which is great, but we still wanna get him down as quick as possible. It's hot day, he's in a precarious spot. So I wanna get up there pretty quick. Keeping patrons safe is a top priority for any park. I mean, not to sound too macabre, but aside from the obvious reasons, it's also their money that makes all this possible. From the 11 campgrounds that dot the desert to the 100 plus miles of road that connect every corner of the park. And keeping the latter of those in top form can be an uphill battle. And judging by the state of this road, there's still some work to be done. But that's precisely why Joshua Tree has people like road supervisor Alex Snay, whose first job today will be adding some much needed shoulder to this two mile stretch of pavement. Visitors, when they come through the park, you know, they might not be paying attention. We don't want them to drive off the road into an unsafe condition. We want to have an area where they can park safely without having to drive off the edge, you know, with a six inch plus lateral drop off. To remove that drop off, all Alex will need is one dump truck, a 20 ton grader, a smaller rig known as a sweeper, and three colleagues to keep all that equipment moving. We have Brandon on the grader, Max in the sweeper, and then Zach on the dump. I'm going to do far side flagging, do this side flagging, since you'll be on this side with the sweeper. Let's get on the road and start dumping. And with all parties in position, including Alex on traffic control, it's time to lay down some shoulder. Now that the dump is out of the way, what the grader is going to do, it's going to move all that material the dump just dropped off the side of the road into the shoulder. He's going to form the shoulder, and then he's going to continually move forward. But moving all that material puts a lot of wear and tear on the grader's blade. And as Alex is about to find out, Alex, copy. The one they brought on this outing must not have had too many miles left to go. Hey, this blade's growing pretty bad. We're going to need to change it. All right, um, go back up to the uh, paved pullout. We'll do them up there. If we don't change them, we can't operate anymore. So it's something that puts a halt to all operations until they get swapped out. But with 27 years of practice, Alex and his team should be able to swap out this blade in just a few short minutes. You got that one? Yeah. Then again, that doesn't account for little hiccups, like when a nut lodges itself into your one and only socket. Max, give me one of them pry bars. That thing is wedged in there. Roadways like these are critical to running any national park, but they're not what brings in the business. No, that would be the majestic landscapes and the flora and fauna that come with them like this Joshua tree, a species only found here in the Southwest, or the long-tailed weasel, a rare sighting in any environment. But maintaining an ecosystem as intricate and delicate as this one is no easy task. It takes near constant supervision and, when needed, intervention. And that is the job of wildlife ecologist Michael Vamstad. Big part of my job is to really balance or help balance that wildlife and uh, visitor use kind of dynamics. This morning, Michael and his new understudy, Katie, have come here to the aptly named Rattlesnake Canyon, not in search of snakes so much, but to investigate an eagle's nest that may warrant their attention. Is it that near that spire up there? Yeah, you just follow the, that spire down. Oh, yeah. You can see that really tall nest. I got it. It's huge. So today what we're going to do is go in, take a look at the nest, see the activity if it's there. And if it is there, we're going to close down the climbing around that nest to protect it. Apex predators like eagles are critical to Joshua Tree's ecosystem, so they tend to be a high priority. But before Michael can make a ruling on whether this nest is indeed active, he and Katie will need to take a closer look. Unfortunately for them, that means a two mile trek through some of the park's toughest country. Apparently, Katie's first. 
She just uh, joined us like six months ago. She's still learning the ropes of the desert. It's a very extreme environment. So we take it slow, we do these projects together, so we make sure that we do it as safe as we can. And we have a rattlesnake. 